Here's why I'm not worried about taxing national sales, retail sales, because we made it transparent and simple for a reason. If they start talking about raising the 999 rate, you're going to know about it. And the American people are going to raise some noise about it. You are the best deterrent we have for keeping 999 at 999 and not letting the bureaucrats go crazy. All right, all right. It's going to put 6 million jobs back into this workforce. It's going to grow this economy at about 5% minimum and then when businesses see that we are serious about this businesses are going to stop planning to survive and they're going to plan to grow here, here, here. and here's another little feature of the 999 plan that a lot of people haven't figured out yet they haven't connected the dots because they're too busy trying to figure out how to kill it but well, they're not going to kill it because of that first nine businesses are able to deduct purchases that they buy to produce the products. Here's the part that they didn't read. Those purchases can be deducted only if they are purchased in the United States of America. It's called level the playing field. What a novel idea. It makes US products much more competitive with other products. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And you know all of this talk about what we do about China? Well, let me tell you what the Kane plan is for dealing with China. Yeah. Outgrow China. That's all we have to do. Outgrow them. But you see, the media is not telling you that 999 levels the playing field. We're going to outgrow China. Businesses are one are going to stay here, and businesses are one are going to come back home because we have lowered the tax rates to the lowest possible rate that we can do. I could go on about 999 all day, but I won't. But I think you get the idea. Amen. Let me apply this to one other one: foreign policy. Work on the right problem. Have the right priorities. Surround yourself with the right people. They often ask me, well, who are your economic advisors? And they hate it when I say, I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> well, don't you think the American people want to know who's advising you on these new radical ideas? I'm not going to tell you. They're my advisors. They're not yours. <laughs> they just want to know who my smart people are so they can attack them. That's why they want to know. And then when I come up with my foreign policy philosophy, they say, well, who are you consulting with on foreign policy? I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> they want to know everything so they can have more ways to try to attack you. All right. All right. Here's how we address foggy foreign policy. You start with a philosophy. And my philosophy is an extension of the Reagan doctrine. President Ronald Reagan's philosophy was, Peace Woo! through strength. Yeah! The Kane Doctrine is peace through strength and clarity. We must clarify who our friends are, clarify who our enemies are, stop giving money to our enemies. the rest of the world who our friends are that we are going to stand beside like Israel we are going to stand by Israel that's clarity one of the reasons that that was this attempted assassination where Iran's fingerprints were all over this I've had to tell reporters until I sit down and look at all the information and all the data intelligence, I can't make a decision about what we ought to do. I do not make decisions on behalf of the United States of America based upon news reports. That's right. <laughs> it looks like Iran was behind this. And based upon the reports that we've seen, that's probably the case. But it would be premature for me to say this is what I will do until I, as Commander-in-Chief, look 
vet all of the facts, all of the information, listen to all of the experts, and then make an informed decision. Because with the Kane administration, I can tell you one thing you're not going to see. You're not going to see me shoot from the lip. But if we make it clear to the rest of the world who our friends are, and if this administration had made it clear where we stood with countries like Israel, I don't think they would have felt froggish and tried something like this. Because if you look throughout history, weakness invites attack. Right. Yeah. And right now, this nation is viewed as weak because we have a president that's viewed as weak because he believes that we can maintain our status in the world by singing Kumbaya and Kumbaya is not a strategy. He's a moron. Our enemies understand one thing. The strength of the United States of America. They understand the strength of this nation economically. And they understand the strength of our military. They desire to have men and women in uniform as good as we have. This president has decided to weaken our military with cost cutting after cost cutting after cost cutting. Let me tell you what the new priority is going to be. We are going to invest in our military capability so we can put some distance between us and those that would like to be as strong as the United States of America. And this president and this administration talking about how they're going to cut costs. There are some costs we need to cut. And so they've got this super committee. If the super committee can't come up, the super committee can't come up with the cuts that the president is looking for, first they gotta come up with it. Right now they haven't done it yet. They're running out of time. If they come up with these cuts that are to go into place, they gotta take it to Congress Congress for an up and down vote. So you got two points here for it to fail. If it doesn't come up with an up and down vote, and they can't agree on what ought to be cut, and I can tell you right now, 535 committee members aren't going to agree what to be cut because they want to protect their pet projects. Then they have this formula that kicks in. And part of this formula will automatically cut our defense department. That's like putting a bullseye on the backs of our men and women in uniform, and I will never put a bullseye on the backs of our men and women in uniform. That's not leadership.